Welcome to Mark Vollmer's farm, Vollmer Family Farms in Carroll, Michigan. So here today we'll, we'll talk about the soil health, but um, you'll hear about the practices of how he's doing it so that maybe you too can give it a try. So Mark, can you tell me a little bit about the field where you've been crimping? You're using a roller crimper. We're going to take a look at that in a bit, but can you tell us about the, um, the, the why you did it and what's the conditions of the soil that make it work? Well, I mean, our, our objective is to minimize tillage so we can uh, build soil quality. And so, I mean, we did it on several fields last year. Um, this, the biggest thing is that we have to get enough biomass in the cover crop for it to work. And that's been um, the struggle I've had because of getting the cover crop planted too late in the fall. Um, but ideally, if I had enough biomass, I would create a mat that um, would hold the weeds. Mm. And um, so we would just plant into this crimped mat. Actually, we'd plant before we crimp and then crimp afterwards. And then we'd be done until harvest time. So we did some acreage again this year because we didn't have enough good rye. Um, we, we did some test strips. Um, I actually did about 20% um, of my soybeans that I mm. did that way, so this spring. So I think you said that you have some test strips that we can go take a look at. Yes. Well, let's do that. That sounds like a great, great uh, way to show people what we're talking about. Okay, so first uh, on this side, I've got um, rye that's going to be crimped. I knew my original goal was to have this whole 50 acre field be crimped rye, but the rye was too thin. So I still left a strip just for a test plot, and I planted soybeans around May 20th into this rye. And I am going to run a roller crimper over it, um, but I'm expecting um, because there's not near enough. Uh, biomass in this rye. I'm expecting mm -hmm. this to be on the weedy side. And then I uh, dissed the rest of the field and I planted soybeans on another about 10 acre strip and planted spring rye at the same time as a cover crop. In this particular field I'm seeing right now I have a, a lot of weed pressure so I'm a little concerned that the rye's not yeah. gonna be able to hold these weeds. And then I got a third strip over there that's just conventional tilled. The, the rye was dissed. I planted the beans around the 26th of May. You know, there was about foot tall rye when I, when I tilled it over there. So I still worked some biomass into the soil over there. So I'll have a comparison of the three different methods. This year wasn't ideal. I didn't have anywhere that my rye was good enough to roll a crimp because it was all planted too late. It's good enough. Was it dense enough or was it large enough at the time you need a crimp? Not dense enough. There wasn't, it didn't boot out like, you know, because it was planted late and there just isn't enough, there just isn't enough material there. Well, one of the most important things that I've already talked about it a few times, but is getting them planted early. Um, and and so in order to do that, we're um, planting shorter day, shorter maturing soybeans, shorter maturing corn, so we could get our crops harvested earlier and get our cover crop planted earlier. It, the only way we're gonna um, be able to do no-till is if we get the cover crop planted early. And even if it isn't good enough to no-till, we're still gonna have more organic matter to till into the soil in the spring if we, if we plant earlier. And that's been our, our reason why we're expanding our cover crops and trying to do some no-till. I've been organic for almost 30 years. And, and when I started, my farm was about 2.5 organic matter. And um, in 19, I was down to 1.7. And that's when I decided I really need to start focusing on building some organic matter back and, and building soil biology and, and why we're emphasizing cover crops um, for the, more for the long term.